Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we're gonna build our very first partition table. We're gonna look at range partitioning because that was one of the first forms of partitioning that came back in Oracle 8.0 way back in the 90s. Time is probably the most common dimension for partitioning a table and let's look at that example now. Here I have a sales table. It's got four months with data in it and already it's getting too large and unwieldy to query. What I'd like to do is break that table up into its individual months, store them as four physically separate segments, and so on throughout the rest of the year. This is how we do the DDL for a partition table. Here's the starting of our create table command. It just looks like a normal create table command. We're gonna use the T stamp column to be the column by which we define the partition. This is how the partition syntax looks. First of all, we have the keyword partition by range, and then we nominate the column or columns onto which we're going to base the partitioning scheme. Here's our first partition, P01. Any value that comes in for the T stamp column less than 2010, January 1st, will go into partition P1. Here we have partition P2. It's defined as timestamp less than 2010-02, which is February. And so on, all the way up to P13, which is less than 2011, January the 1st. How do we see those partitions? In the data dictionary, we look in user tab partitions. Here's a simple query, select partition name, the P name, partition position, and the high value from user tab partitions for our table called sales we just created. And you can see, we actually have the definition there in the high value column. It actually contains the syntax of the date we used, the timestamp value in this case, the positions P1 up to P13. Now you might be thinking, surely to define each partition, we need two dates. We need where the partition starts, in this case the 1st of February, and we also need where the partition ends, at the end of February. Yet when we define our partition table, we only specify one date. How do we somehow infer the start and the end date? Well, range partition boundaries are capped by the upper bound. To explain that, what we have is some, a throwback to our old high school geometry, which is the concept of inclusive and exclusive. When we define a partition, it starts from a value in which is inclusive, and it goes up to, but not including, hence exclusive, a known high value. So when I have a partition definition like this, here's two of the partitions from our sales table. For partition number two, we can see we're saying it's definitely less than 2010 February 1st. It doesn't include that value. That would go into the next partition. Where is the starting value for partition P02? It's defined as the upper value of the previous partition. So in this case, partition two ranges between 2010 January 1st, including that date, and up to but not including 2010 February 1st. If anything, I've named my partition badly here because P02 actually refers to January's data, not February's data, but it helps illustrate the point. You can run this script yourself by clicking on the live SQL link that you can find in the YouTube description. In the next session, even with this simple starting point, we'll see some of the benefits of having a partition table. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle. Keeping it simple with SQL.